So I might put on a little cruise. The boat's been brought back by our friends yesterday, so I need to get it back to its home mooring. So here I am at Armitage, just where and near I live, and uh, need to get the boat back to Huddlesford moorings. There she is, there she sits, all ready to go. But it's a lovely little bridge, this. Here you can see the Armitage Shanks factory over there. Beautiful. So, that's my home bridge, that is. Bridge 59. They call it Kent's Bridge, but you don't see reference to that very often. But it's Bridge 59. Trent and Mersey Canal. Armitage. And off we go. Heading for Litchfield. It's not very warm and it's very blustery. So it could be fun. I've got my lunch with me. Healthy. So it's a Monday, so Mrs L is having to do a bit of work from home, so as much as she would like to have joined me, someone's got to earn the money, and someone's got to manage the boat, do you know what I mean? The logistics, they have to be, um, they have to be applied, don't they, and somebody has to be the applicator. I know my position in our relationship, and I am the captain of the ship, the harbour master, the galley boy. When she's on board, I become her servant. So I thought I'd better create some sort of content because, to be honest, I've been lacking. Now about Natterings has taken a back seat. We were doing quite well for a while. <laughs> I've let it slip. I don't know if you've seen the uh, the last one I put out about uh, the evolution of the of a part of the BCN using like ancient maps and stuff. Really enjoyed doing that. It's not had many viewers because I guess it doesn't float everyone's boat. So I did that. And um, but if you get a chance and you haven't looked at it, have a look because I. It was nice putting that together. I love doing a bit of research. And actually, when you start to research, unless it's just me being a bit of a geek, I don't know. But when you start to research, there is so much information there. It is in, it's intriguing just how things happened 250 years ago, you know. Intriguing. It never fails to kind of light my fire a little bit and I never saw myself as a studious type or a you know wanting to sort of show an interest in that I'm a terrible reader I don't read I don't read books I don't read newspapers I'm a very lazy I like to view I like to watch TV and listen to the news you're right But this subject matter um, really gets me. And uh, it's just the whole thing, I think. Again, if you, if you watch that previous vlog, you'll, you, you'll, I'll touch on a few of the things. But, you know, for instance, you look at what was called the, they were called the Lunar Society. And 
they were a group of very clever people for their time. The likes of James Watt, Brindley. I don't know whether Brindley was a part of the Lunar Society, but he would. He, he was the same day. Um, Josiah Wedgwood, Matthew Bolton, um, Erasmus Darwin. They're all people local-ish to Litchfield. Now I say ish. Nothing was local in those days, really, was it? Because they couldn't, and they would meet. I think at the Lunar Society they met every full moon or something like that. It was on the lunar cycle. And they were just meeting a pub somewhere by, by Litchfield Cathedral. And they would have a chat about <laughs> how brilliant they are, how clever they are, and what can we invent next, and what can we do next. What, you know, but they would have probably only been in their sort of 20s, 30s. So they would have, they'd have been lads. They would have been lads of the day, enjoying a beer, having a bit of a laugh, and it just, that the whole, um, the logistics of, of that. So it's not just what they invented that interests me. It's about how they travelled to that thing, you know, and horse and, and, and carriage and stuff. Or they walked a lot, or, and then they got to get home from there. I, I guess they stayed in an inn. But, you know, and then what were they talking about amongst other things, you know, amongst their brilliance and their you know, what's going to be invented and stuff. What, what were those chats like? What were they like as individuals? Were they laddish? Or were they geeky, scientist-y types? It intrigues me. And so, as soon as you start to research them, and start research, you, can then, you, you then end up going down a rabbit hole because you can pick on one of those characters and start to research, and every one of them has has a story. Every one of them you could write a play or a musical about. It, it's, it, it's so interesting, so interesting. You know, I touched on in that same vlog on John Baskerville, um, who was is in, he invented the typeface, the Baskerville. You, you'll see it when you when you're on, on your laptop and stuff. Baskerville is a, is a typeface, is a font. But he was again from Birmingham. He had a house in the centre of Birmingham where, you know, now the, um, the International Convention Centre is and you start reading about him, it's just, I get lost in it. I get lost in it. And I, I think there is so much information there. But again, it's like I say, I like that level. I like that level below the thing they're famous for. It intrigues me. Always nice and quiet on here, sort of uh, around these months. But as usual, you always meet a boat coming at the point <laughs> that, <laughs> that you would rather not have seen a boat. He's gonna have a shock in a minute when he sees me coming through this bridge hole. He's gonna, <laughs> cause I'm already in. <laughs> there you go. But it's always the same. I bet this person hasn't seen anybody else all day. Do you want me to go that side? I can go down there. Wasn't that typical as ever? I bet you've seen nobody else all day. She was friendly. <laughs> not a word, not a word. <laughs> so when it's not a word, it's almost like, did they think that was my fault? <laughs> Slewed across the canal. I offered to go down the offside of it. Ah, people. There's nouts to strangers folk, as they say. <clears throat> but hey-ho. 
So what was I boring you about? Oh yeah, <laughs> the Lunar Society and stuff. Yeah, incredible, really incredible. See, I also get thinking about, about the likes of James Brindley, do you know what I mean? He created, or he surveyed, uh, so it was kind of his, his baby, wasn't it? The Grand Cross, being Trenton Mersey, coming from the Mersey, down as far south as Fradley Junction, and then going back up to the tidal Trent, and which ultimately, you know, took them out into the North Sea. So that's linking the Mersey with the North Sea, with the, with the you know, Irish Sea with the North Sea, two significant ports. And then at Fradley, you've got the junction that uh, went on to the Cov Canal, ultimately to the Oxford Canal, ultimately to the Thames, so linking the Thames up. Uh, and at Great Haywood, before you get to Fradley, you can take the, um, the Staffs Worcester south uh, down to Stourport, onto the Severn, basically out through Bristol and Bristol Channel, so another port. So he did all that, he surveyed all that. How, so the, 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 now think of the logistics of that, of the travel. That's a long way, that's a long way in a car. I'll just pop and see this field in Staffordshire uh, because I just need to you know, check the, that we've got, we've got the right contours and stuff. How, how, how did that happen? How did he get around all those places to, to make all that happen? You know, not, not just how did he do the measurements with the, the equipment they got in those days, how did he know where all the levels were and stuff, just, just how. How did he travel there? What did that look like? You know, on those muddy cart tracks and stuff. Across those distances. Ridiculous. In a really relatively short space of time. Look at the mess the dickheads are making of HS2. Do you know what I mean? Look at the equipment and the manpower they're throwing at that. And compare that to, to what was happening 250 years ago. Incredible. Incredible. Blows my mind. Right, I'm going to get on with some cruising. <laughs> I'll stop boring you. I bet you all wish Mrs Lumsden was here, you, so, so that she could have... Uh, some sparkling covers. Oh no, she doesn't, does she? Forgot that. Tell you what, they are an excellent bit of kit, and there are others about, I'm sure, but that is fantastic. I get that charged up during the day, I run my telly off it all night, it's fantastic. Last week, me and uh, Mrs. Lumsden and several others were very busy uh, working backstage for Sutton Coldfield Musical Youth Theatre's production of Les Miserables. Look, what a show that was. Almost sell out uh, audiences, certainly from about the Thursday, Thursday, Friday, and the two shows on Saturday. Brilliant. Those kids were incredible. And uh, just the music from Les Mis, if, if it's not your thing, I hope such, such is life. But uh, if you're into musical theatre, you're probably into Les Miserables and uh, just fantastic. The dream role in there for me, I'd love to play the part of Javert. And um, so when I came into musical theatre some, oh, I don't know, 30 years ago, I thought that's the part for me. And one day I'll get the chance to sing it. And here we are 30 years on and the, part of the show is still so popular the professionals still make a lot of money from it and therefore it's not released to amateur adult societies. It is released to school children age, 
Uh, so at least we get the chance to be a part of it in that respect. But um, oh, what a show. Song from Javert called Stars. Just immense. Lord, let me find him that I may see him safe behind bars. I will never rest till then. This I swear, this I swear by the stars. Oh, 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 what a song! What a song! And so, having bored you with tales of 18th century scientific boffins, followed by tales of shenanigans on stage with a musical set in 18th century Paris, I'll bid you farewell. Well, it remains for me to say, and I don't do this very often, please do subscribe. I seem to have lost a lot of you recently. And um, if you are watching this on Facebook or something like that, please do press share and no, just press like. All those things that all the other vloggers tell you to do every time. I don't give you a hard time. Go on, just do it. It's all free, you know. Bye for now.